Okay, so we are looking at uh, hydrolysis of uh, sucrose, and then this reaction is uh, first order uh, with respect to sucrose. Uh, we have to find out the activation energy, our hands factor, and the weight constant at 47 degrees Celsius. When we are given the uh, the uh, weight constant at 27 degrees Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius. So for this question, we are going to uh, use the foreign equation to find out the um, activation energy first. All right, so yeah, we are going to plug in the K1. Uh, Assume, uh, say K1 is 20, 27 degrees Celsius. So we have 2.1 times 10 to 11, divided by 8.5 times 10 to the power left 11, equals to dA divided by 8.314. And then we have one over, uh, uh, we are looking at T2. So we have uh, 37 uh, degrees Celsius, but when we convert that to Kelvin, we will be 310 um, minus, okay, so it's minus, one over 27 degrees Celsius, so it's 300. All right, so let's, uh, okay, let's solve for this uh, equation. So we have minus 1.4 on the left, and then we have EA, and then you have 8.314. Then we have one divided by 310. Subtract one divided by three hundred, and then we will have around one that's one point oh seven and ten to the four. Okay, so when we uh, solve for this equation, you should be able to find out dA equals to um, one o eight. kilojoule per mole. And this will be the EA. So when we solve for this equation and then we convert joule to kilojoule, then we will have a 108 kilojoule per mole. So from here, we will have uh, uh, the value in joule. So you refer around 108,000 joule per mole, and then I convert that to kilojoule per mole. Okay, so we have the EA, and then we're going to look at the iron hands factor. So um, for iron hands factor, uh, we know that the Arrhenius equation is uh, k weight constant equals to the lateral law of dA divided by Rt. So let's pick the uh, equilibrium constant at 27 degrees Celsius. So we have 2.1 times 10 to the left 11, and then we want to find out uh, a uh, d, and then we have 108 uh, 0, 0, 0, yeah, kilojoule per mole divided by 8.314. Uh, times the temperature at 27 degrees Celsius so should be equal to 300 K. And then we're going to solve for A. So we have 108,000 divided by 8.314 divided by 300 times let's see if, and then we have a lateral law of this number. And then we have 2.1 times 10 to the power of letter 11. So divided by our um, answers, uh, we will have a uh, 1.34 times 10 to the power of eight. It's a pretty big number. So this will be the uh, value of A. Okay, just to double check again. And we have the right answer. So it's 1.34 times 10 to the uh, power of 8. So we have A. Okay, so we are going to look for the K at 47 degrees Celsius. So we are going to use our Hennis equation. So we have 1.34 times 10 to the power of uh, 8. And then we are going to have a uh, let's load number to 108002 
divided by uh, 8.34. Times our uh, temperature, 47 plus 227 uh, will be equal to 220 Kelvin. And then we are going to uh, solve for this. So 108. And we should be able to find that the weight constant is equal to 3.14 times 10 to the minus 10. Uh, because it's the first order reaction, so the weight constant should have uh, um, a unit is a second um, to the power left one. So this will be the um, weight constant at 47 degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius, so we already saw for that. Okay, so let's look at B. So when we have a 0 0.150 molar of sucrose uh, initially, and then uh, at 27 degrees Celsius, uh, it just achieves equilibrium. And then we have an equilibrium constant situation, 1.65 times 10 to less 7. So how long will it take to for our initial amount to the equilibrium amount? So because we have a first order reaction, so uh, the integrated rate, rate law should be uh, uh, should be this one showing on the uh, on the screen right now. So this is called the integrated weight law. So uh, if we were going to rearrange uh, our uh, equation, because we want to find the time to achieve uh, from 0 0.150 to 1.65 times 10 to the last 7. So we're going to rearrange the integrated weight law, and then we can find our time. OK, so from here, we will have a natural law of our uh, concentration of reactant at any time. So actually, at any time, subtract our initial concentration with a little circle over there. So move it to the I move that to the left. And then going to divide by left of k. And then we will have the time. So what we're going to do is that we are going to uh, plug in all the numbers. So track 0 0.150. And then uh, divide by um, 2.1 times 10 to the uh, 11. So let's uh, look for the answers. Um, and we should have the uh, time to be seven point. Um, 1 times 10 to the power of 9 seconds. So you will convert to minute and then convert to hours. Uh, it would take, uh, it still have to take 1 point, uh, roughly around 2. Yeah, 2 times 10 to the power of 6, not level 6, power of 6 hours. So it's a really long time. Okay, so uh, part C, why are we going to assume irreversible reaction in part B in order to simplify the calculation? So uh, so in part B, yeah, I'm using yeah, in part B, why? So uh, because when we consider it's a, a reversible reaction, there will be a reaction, a forward reaction and a backward reaction. Okay, so we have to take in consideration of both forward and backward reaction weight, and then we have to um, find out the overall weight that is going forward to the right in order to find out the actual time. If we have a reversible reaction, we have to take in consideration of both of the reaction, so uh, the time will be different. But if we are going to be re uh, re irreversible, so we only worry about the forward reaction, we will be first order, and then we can apply the integrated weight law, and then we can find out uh, um, the time. 